Here we are in the beautiful Dease Lake, British Columbia, a must-stop hub if you're traveling the Cassiar Highway because it's basically the only place you're going to get any supplies. We spent a couple nights at an exceptional wreck site here called Sawmill Point, but there's a couple things in the area that need some splorin'. So before we head further north, let's mosey into town. To properly understand the significance of today's first adventure location, I think it's important to properly understand what is Dease Lake. Let me show you. This is Dease Lake. Tiny little community in northern British Columbia, right before the Yukon border. There is one fuel station with a restaurant and supermarket. There is a bar over there that's been closed ever since I've been coming here. One hotel over there. Population is approximately 400, and this is basically just a little industry town now and a stop off point for tourists. And though the First Nation people have been here for millennia, the town came to be in the early 1800s. Hudson's Bay Company came in and set up a trading post, 1837. We touched on that a little bit in last week's episode. It is also geologically significant because this is the Arctic Pacific Divide. We'll get a little deeper into that at our second location. Well, let's make our way over to our first. Peace Lake is not necessarily an industry town, but it's a product of industry. With an almost exclusively resource-based economy, it's seen boom and bust for the better part of a hundred years leaving behind a lot of abandoned stuff, which is probably what brings us today's location. Spied this baby on our way to the Hudson's Bay trading post the other day. Looks like it's been abandoned for quite some time. What was happening in Dees Lake back in the day that justified the construction of such a large facility? I am not quite sure, but it doesn't really look like she's ever seen her glory days. Also not sure if this is a hotel or an apartment complex. Obviously, would be a serious health risk entering any of these buildings, and obviously it's privately owned. You can see with the abundance of signage on it. So we're not going to go inside, we're not going to do any more poking around, but I'd like to see a view from the top. Unfortunate news, something I hadn't even thought about. Dees Lake is close to helicopter and float plane bases. So as soon as the drone found satellites, it flew right on back home. Which is a bummer because this was certainly gonna be the video thumbnail. So if this is all you came here for, you can go ahead and watch something else. But I recommend you stick around because we got some hot fish in action coming up.
one last stop before we officially leave the Dees. And this one is of significance to our Arctic Circle expedition. Most people coming into Dees Lake pass right by a sign that says the Arctic Pacific Divide and they don't even realize how special that is. Let me teach you. This is the Tanzilla River. It's a tributary of the Stikine River, which flows westward to the Pacific Ocean, going north from here, including the Dees River right after Dees Lake, goes into Liard River and flows north to the Arctic Ocean. Kind of a special little thing. Had to totally backtrack to come see this, but it was so worth it. How far up did you guys go? Uh, all over the truck. Yeah? Yeah. How was the road? Uh, really good, actually. Nice. Yeah. Was there any closures for wildfire anywhere? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the street. Uh, By Kelly. Uh, uh, okay. So it's daunting, I guess. Yeah. yeah. If you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you'll know my love for the Cassiar Highway because it's basically just a thousand kilometers of beautiful views, pristine wilderness, and nobody to bother you. With so many miles ahead of us this season, we're going to bypass some of my favorite gems in search of some more northern gems. The big plan for the next couple days is pretty basic. We're going to put on our traveling pants, put on some nice tunes, put on some miles. Today has been quite a mixture of sunshine and rainstorms, but aside from all that, it is a monumentous day because it marks the first milestone of our Arctic Circle expedition because we've officially driven the entire length of British Columbia bottom to top and we're entering Yukon Territory. But before we go any further, there's something that we gotta discuss. Most people doing a trip northbound across this border are doing a trip to the Yukon, which is what I used to say. And then I did a trip to the Yukon and everyone said, it's not the Yukon, it's just Yukon. You don't say you're taking a trip to the British Columbia. So we need to solve it. Let me know. Is it Yukon or is it the Yukon? Either way, I'm gonna go back over here to the British Columbia and see if my sticker is still on the sign. Yep, there it is. The destination adventure. I can see it from here. 
Destination Adventure sticker on the Yukon sign. And someone stuck something on it. Can't believe it. That's okay, I don't mind. Sharing is caring. Whatever you call this place, it's awfully beautiful. So let's go in there and enjoy it. Kind of funny. Our first stop in Yukon is basically British Columbia. For the first 100 kilometers or so, the border snakes back and forth over BC and Yukon. But we are at Little Atlan Lake. One of my best days ever of pike fishing was right here on this lake. Hoping I can duplicate it. It's been a whole lot of fun seeing Emmy get into her first fishing opportunities. Not something she's had really an option to do much before. But for the last few weeks, our options have been tiny little rainbow and a little bit of Arctic grayling. Looking forward to getting her into her first proper size pike. I'm also excited to say we have somewhat of a celebrity guest joining today. There's a couple other content creators in the area right now. Simon, AKA Foresty Forest, and Louie from Adventure Time Louie. Gonna take him out for a day on the water, see if we can get him into a couple of pikes. What's cracking, dog? How's it going? Good. You guys wanting to do a little bit of fishing? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah? Cool. Said it, yeah. Right on. <laughs> okay, everybody gets a piece of cable because the pike will cut oh, your yeah? line. Wow, okay. So. Really? Yeah. Good to know, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome to Fish City, guys. Population unknown. It's about to decrease. Oh, we're into one. Hold on, let it play a little bit. Let it play a little bit. Oh my goodness. You're just gonna reef it right in here, huh? Hold on, don't bust the line. We're gonna net it. Oh my God. That's it. You did it. Finally, wow. Talk about a friggin' success. Dreams, yeah, dreams are coming true today. Wow. It's a good day. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a big one. Is it? I think so. Oh, it's a biggie. It's a biggie. It's a biggie. Oh, right. Okay, let him take it. Let him take it. Don't rush it. And I think you should switch to this guy. Right down inside there. Yeah. You can get right to the middle of them. Woohoo! Nice Beauty! <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice! Woohoo! Yeah! 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 Hey, did it break the line right off? Yeah, that was so big. Was it big? Yeah, it was like maybe three times the size of that what? one. <laughs> wow. That was amazing. Look at that. Okay, you gotta try one of these. Is he oh hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna get him by the gill. Okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh my gosh! Pretty unorthodox way to net a fish there. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my what a it's monster! Huge. Here. You come down to the bone and you turn your knife out, and you can actually get a good chunk of meat off it here. Oh, mm. skinless. That's skinless and boneless, right? There you go. And that's where the seed go. Oh, that was all the Y bones in there. That's the Y bones. Ah, okay, cool. So that's it. So there's your meat. 
Yeah. This better be a freaking good pike, man. I'm pissed if it's not. Come on, give us some sizzle. Crispy. First taste of the pike cooked by the master chef. <laughs> A little bit of rice cooked by the master rice cooker. Mmm, smells edible. <laughs> That's good. Mm -hmm. Probably. That's a good start. Absolutely delicious, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Is he drooling? Drooling right no, on the ground. Buddy. I'll give you some when I get some. Come here. That's <laughs> hilarious. Oh. Pretty cool getting a chance to take out Mr. Forrest and Louie, get into their first pike. But I think it's time to take Emmy out there, see if we can get her into something a little bit more substantial than a half pound rainbow. Well, the weather has seemed to turn on us a little bit, but that's okay. Pike don't mind a little bit of rain. And now that I figured out the exact location of Pike Town. I'm just curious how quickly we can get into one. Are we on? Fish on. I think so too. Keep your tip up. Oh, is this a gnat? Is this a monster? I think it's a fish. Oh yeah, that's a fish. Keep that tip up. Keep reeling, keep reeling. We're into a biggie. <laughs> oh, it's a monster. It is a freaking monster. Let him run, let him take it. Let him take it. This thing, there's no way we're getting this in the boat. Okay, okay, I need to put on some sunglasses. So oh my goodness. Look at the size of that thing. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Bring him over here. I'm gonna try not to get a hook in the eye right now. Oh my goodness! Look at this fish! This thing is an absolute tank. Is it bigger than yours? This is bigger than any pike I've ever caught. Pissing me off right now with that! <laughs> Hold it up a little bit! Look at that thing! Oh my goodness! Beautiful first ever northern pike. <laughs> and it's bigger than any pike I've ever caught. Piss me off right now. Now we're gonna try and release this thing. Oh, so we cannot keep it. No, it's too big. Oh. That's why I'm letting him go. Okay. You need to catch a smaller one. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty embarrassing. You caught too big of a fish. <laughs> Give it a try. Oh, there he goes. Oh, yeah. There he goes. <sighs> When you first hooked that, I thought you were stuck on, on the bottom. On a rock? On a rock or a weed or something. <laughs> That's crazy. I was going to see about getting into a lunker with the fly rod. And uh, big thanks to Stony Tackle Shack for sending me this super radical telescopic fly rod. But uh, we might have got a little too radical reeling in that monster. Something happened to the fly rod. We're playing around. Only monsters allowed. What? You got it. <laughs> what? That's a tiny little one. I think we scared away all the big ones. Yeah. Oh, there it is. I knew it. 
I just friggin' knew it. I think it's a big one. You think it's a biggie? About to though. Oh, you got it! Oh my god! Just tease him in there. There you go. <laughs> Not in the thing. They gotta go in the dirt. They gotta go in the laundry, anyways. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Nice one. <laughs> Woo! Emmy's on a roll. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Ah. Ah. <laughs> he tried to jump right in at you. <laughs> there you go. Hold on, hold on, little. There you go. Lift straight up. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's a nice size. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right away. He might be a big one. He's staying down there. Deep. Got a quite Oh my god! Might be into a biggie here. No, I can't see him yet. He might be big. No wimping out on me. Oh. Hold on. That's big. I think we gotta play him a little bit more. This is a nice eater. Friggin' big fat guy. We can get him? Yeah, definitely. Oh. <laughs> what a beauty. There you go. He's not gonna fit in the net. We're gonna have to do the same thing as before. I'll get the head in, grab his tail, but we need him like super tired. <laughs> oh. ah! Ooh, right off the face. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. That's beautiful fish. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Okay, going back. When they're this tired, you just gotta basically just help them stay upright. And if you go forwards and back like this, it gets uh, water going through the gills. Helps him get sloshing again. If you're wondering how big the fish get here, this is a decent sized pike. And you can see a scar on him from the mouth of a larger pike. Crazy. Well, I really didn't know how the day was going to turn out. The windy app was calling for wind all day. Ended up with just a beautiful day out here. Got into a lot of pike. Got two beautiful keepers. Gonna see about making some soup, I think. Arigato. Welcome to another episode of Expedition Kitchen, everybody. Just finished frying up some pike fillets that were delicious, but I'm not a very good filleter and pike are notoriously difficult to fillet. So to save on some of our loss, we're gonna 
boil up some pike soup. I've done this once before following a slight bit of a recipe, but we weren't really prepared for this, so we're just freestyling it. Got two carcasses in here boiling away, and I was surprised to see the meat has come off the bones quite nicely. Got a pot full of edge to add in here, and I've been given very strict instructions from Emmy. She says, cut all of the vegetables, but don't cut your finger. Because after that pike fishing today, we're down to one band-aid left. My hands are in pretty rough shape. I think the first thing to go in is gonna be the taters. Did you say cut the taters or whole taters? Whole taters going in the pot. Got some type of grass onion hybrid here. Just chopping that up into smaller pieces. Put it in for a little flavor of flav. How much garlic? Half? No. There's no such thing as too much garlic. We'll do some onion. Yeah. Coming along nicely. Next up, got the mini cabbage. Oh, there's a 24 valve behind me right now. I can hear it. I guess I'll get some mushrooms going. Last but not least, some mini carrots. And of course, with a little Asian influence on Destination Adventure, gotta spice it up a little bit. Bit of parsley. Arigato. And I stumbled across this absolute gem last time I was making pike soup, just because I couldn't find any other butter where I was at, pretty remote little town. Turned out to be the best butter I've ever had. Tell you a little something about this soup right now. It is smelling freaking amazing. We're gonna let that simmer with the fish bones in there for about an hour. Uh, fish out the bones call her dinner. Just sitting down to enjoy the fruits of our labor. The soup has been simmering away for a good portion of the day. Just fried up a couple of beautiful pike fillets. One thing we learned about the soup, we had a little bit of difficulty with the bones, unfortunately. I think there's going to be a couple left in the soup, but we left the whole carcass in there for I don't know, like five hours, six hours, something like that. And when we took it out, it was a little softer than we thought, but this smells fantastic. I trust it's gonna be delightful. Gotta let it cool down for a moment. So I'll show you a piece of this pike filet. Mm. And it's just delicious. I tend to overcook most things. Last, uh, Couple weeks, been just killing it. Another thing I noticed about this soup, quite a lot of oil actually came out of that fish. Mm. That flavor is fantastico. Oh, that is good. Well, there you have it. If you're ever out pike fishing and you don't wanna waste any pike, can make yourself a really nice soup. Emmy and I are gonna sit down and enjoy this beautiful meal. And I thank you for enjoying another episode of Destination Adventure, everybody. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints, and I'll catch you in the next one. Now before we get started, let me pop my collar. Baby, let me freshen up for that pop like dollar. Mm, ice cream soup, beige, proud of product. You can't hate on the juice, man, pride the product. Ooh, when I get serious, let's move the spot. We can put it on rocks till we off the top. Get a litty off shot till we off the drop. With the clouds, my G, I got caution hot. My hands up in the clouds, my feet gon' touch the ground.